Sis, Terry Gannon, Jamal Anderson, and Mark Morgan with you from Austin, Daryl K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium on an absolutely perfect day for college football. Missouri in town at 4-1, Texas also at 4-1. Missouri took the opening kick, and then the first play from scrimmage, a 28-yard pass from Grant Smith to his tight end, Martin Rucker. But here they are over the middle, and Thompson on Boga across midfield. And another good gain into Texas territory. Brad Smith, the junior from Youngstown, Ohio, moving the team on this first series. And uh, the running numbers a little bit down this year, but the passing numbers are up. He's got over 8,000 total yards, Jamal, in his career. Yeah, Brad Smith is a fantastic talent. Like you said, Terry, he rushed for over 1,400 yards last year. He has an opportunity in this football game and the next game to eclipse so many Missouri records and also move into the top 10 uh, Russian quarterbacks of all time in NCAA. So he's definitely a threat that they got to slow down. But it brings up fourth down for Missouri. Aaron Ross, the sophomore from Tyler, Texas, back deep at his own 10-yard line. Matt Hainis, the punter. This is Maybe just a tad bit too good. Just ends up in the end zone. They'll bring it out by 20, a punt of 48 yards. So uh, we are underway here in Austin. Texas trying to come back after that loss to Oklahoma. And Vince Young, the sophomore from Houston, who was just 8 for 23 last week against Oklahoma. You hate to see a young man take some hits, right. but he certainly has in the media here after that performance and Mac Brown said we have to throw the ball better than we did. Yeah no question about it and you, you sit down and talk to Greg Davis offensive coordinator he says you know we knew coming into this football season that we were going to be a running team that we were going to primarily have to run. We have three wide receivers who are on our, on our roster last year who are gone now and they knew coming in that they're going to have to get Vince downfield throwing the ball. Play action Young on the rollout incomplete Tony Jeffrey the intended receiver check our Starting lineups are backs and receivers. Cedric Benson, number two in the nation in rushing, 162 yards per game. Jeffrey, a question mark. That's why we don't have his picture up there. Right. And he had a shoulder injury last week against Oklahoma, but he is in the starting lineup. Lima Swede also getting a start for Brian Carter today. But we will see Carter. Young wideouts after the trio of uh, very good wide receivers left, including Roy Williams. Well, that has been one of the problems for Mac Brown this year. Problem last week. I mean, they were 4-0 going into that game. Here's the quick pitch out to Benson, who turns the corner. Gain of about seven for Cedric Benson, the senior from Midland, Texas. Offensive line, it is a good one. And Jason Glenn, the man who has started for four years, 32nd consecutive start, he makes the calls on that offensive line, going against a solid defensive front for Missouri, especially the tackles. Atia Ellison, C.J. Mosley, three-year starters, two of the Big 12's best. So it brings up third and three on this opening drive for the Longhorns. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far. Out of the gun is Young. He's going to run it. And has a Texas first down across the 30 up to the 33. The Missouri defensive unit, a very good one. The top total defense in the Big 12. There's your linebackers. Henry, Henry Sweat, who had a big game last week in the win over Baylor, gets a start. Kinney, a very good weak side linebacker. And Jason Simpson, they put him in a position to make big plays, and he's done that. He had a pick last week in the road win against Baylor, and that was the first conference road win for Missouri since midseason 2002. There you see the top overall defense in the Big 12. There goes Benson. He's got a hole. Busts it back across midfield. Lost the ball momentarily. To the 43, and now they'll sort it out. Yeah, obviously, Terry, that was a problem last week with Cedric Benson. He did have 92 yards rushing, but he had the critical fumbles in that game against OU. Got it back here, though. So a big game for the Longhorns. You get a look at Cedric Benson here. He makes a nice cut on the inside, but he runs into his own man. That's tough right there. Ball gets jarred loose, and then luckily they recover the football. Spotted at the 44 of Missouri. Call it a gain of 23. Yeah, he's had the four fumbles the last couple of weeks. So for a guy who's one of the top rushers in the nation that certainly uh, and a guy who they have to rely on Jamal because the passing game has not really been there young on the play fake keeps it and in inside the 35 down to the 33 get a look at the quickness 
of Vince Young, David Overstreet, finally stopped him after a gain of 12. Yeah, you talk about how do you get a young quarterback like Vince Young to get on fire early? How do you get him rolling after a tough game against Oklahoma? The first series of downs you see from Texas, he's involved in all the plays. You have a play action on first down, then you have him rolling out and running for it, and then you have another run by Vince Young. How do you get an athletic guy like this going already? Keep him on the run. Keep him moving. Second leading rusher for the Longhorns on the year. He's got 290 yards now on the ground, and he looks for more here. Young over the left side, down to the 23. So right now, the Longhorns moving the ball against a uh, very solid Missouri defense. Yeah, Missouri defense comes in here, total defense number one, and you see the rankings right here, scoring defense three, passing defense are two, and in rushing defense are third, they average less than, they average giving up less than 100 yards a game, and obviously Texas is intent on challenging that today, Terry. Last few years, they've gotten it done with offense, the defense a little suspect, but Matt Eberflus, the defensive coordinator, has been playing awfully well so far this year. In fact, they've created nine turnovers the last three games. But straight ahead, they'll move the chains with the fullback, Will Matthews. It is not a stat that Mac Brown really wants to see again, but uh, they have played awfully well after losses to Oklahoma the last four, four years. Colorado, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, in Iowa State last year, Vince Young's first start wins in each of the last four years in the game after Oklahoma, and those have all been on the road. So they come home to Austin this time. Benson fights his way down to the 11. Let's check in for more on that with the third member of our crew, Mark Morgan. Now, not only has uh, Texas been uh, very resilient in the week following a loss to the Sooners, but somehow the Longhorns have been able to carry that redirected effort through the rest of the regular season. In fact, Texas has lost one, one regular season game in the last four years post Oklahoma. Now, yesterday, linebacker Derek Johnson told me that the veteran players tell the young guys, hey, you got to have a short memory. And also defensive tackle Roderick Wright said you just drop it. You don't worry about it. And we seem to get rolling again. Easier said than done, but Mark, you're right. They've been able to do that the last four years. Young fighting his way inside the 10, close to the nine. That's where he needs to get to for the first down. Phil Pitts, the senior from Jefferson City, Missouri, on the hit. I tell you what, Terry, for a young quarterback, after all the criticism, the tough loss, and the consecutive losses against Oklahoma, Vince Young looks really, really composed right now. And Greg Davis said, we got to sprint him out. We got to keep him out of pocket. We got to keep him moving. We've obviously said, I didn't anticipate having such a tough time throwing the football this season. We knew it was going to be harder, but we got to do whatever we can to get this guy rolling again, and obviously it's working. Third and we'll call it two. Benson dropped the football, and Missouri had it initially. Did they keep it? Looked like the Tigers came up with it. C.J. Mosley was there right away, and we'll wait for the official signal. Tiger football. What a tremendous turnover when a football team is doing basically whatever they want, marching down the football field. Uh, it must have some, something happens in the exchange. Cedric is not close enough. The pocket isn't big enough. Vince kind of sticks it in there a little bit, and Cedric's reaching for the football. And that is all. You're always going to have a fumble in that situation. You look at C.J. Mosley, the big defensive tackle, dives right on the football. Hard to read his mind, Jamal, but it looked like he didn't expect to get the football. Yeah, well, you know, in, the, in that exchange, you go to the sideline and you work on it, and it's like, okay, what happened? Cedric Benson has to give the quarterback a bigger pocket on that football. You can't, you got to run, as a running back, you got to go to the hole where you're supposed to be going. The quarterback's job is to get it to you. I don't know what happened on that exchange. Tenth turnover created by Missouri in the last three games. Brad Smith brings them out. Marcus Woods, the backup tailback, out near the 20-yard line. Big game again on first down. So it's Brad Smith leading the way at the quarterback spot. Our backs and receivers for Missouri. Damian Nash, normally the starter, coming back off a knee that kept him out last year, has played awfully well. They'll play a couple of tight ends, including Rucker, very often. In fact, on that first big pass play, first play from the line of scrimmage, it was Rucker with a gain of 23. So they move the chains after Woods picked up 10. First and 10 at the 20. Ekwu Ekwu was in motion. Now catches it right at the line of scrimmage, but swarmed under by Cedric Griffin. 
Offensive line for Missouri, an experienced one, including Tony Palmer, three-year starter, all Big 12, a number of those lists last year, going against the Texas defensive line led by Roderick Wright, the preseason All-American who has battled a high ankle sprain all year long and has 12 career sacks. A tough injury to play with, but he's fought through it. Yeah, he absolutely has, and they need Roderick Wright, particularly in a game like today when you have a quarterback like Brad Smith who's so dangerous running in and throwing the ball. Smith's going to keep it across the 25 to the 20. 26 and bring a third in about four, maybe five. Linebackers, Harris and Johnson, two of the best, and Derek Johnson may just be the best linebacker in the country. The secondary, led by Philip Giger, 11 tackles last week against Oklahoma. The senior leader, Michael Huff, has also had an extremely good year in that secondary. Two safeties are very good ones for the Longhorns. Third and four for the Tigers. Out of the gun, Smith on the roll. Throws it up, incomplete, Mboga, and good coverage by the Texas secondary, including Giger. Yeah, you know what's interesting to me, Terry, Brad Smith hasn't been under a tremendous amount of pressure so far. I mean, it's odd. I know they're worried about his running possibilities, and you can see Derek Johnson kind of screening him. Thompson and Boga injured. Yeah, he landed hard. Oh. Penalty on that play going against Missouri, but it will be declined, of course. Bring it up fourth down. So it's no wonder that uh, he had a lot of time. I'm like Brad Smith sitting back there all day in the pocket. These guys are holding. <laughs> For good reason. So 7.56 left in the first. Aaron Ross back deep, this time in his own 41. For those of you who watched the Oklahoma Kansas State game the Sooners tested on the road today but coming through in the end Big 12 has been awfully interesting this year into Texas territory and they'll down it at the 46 a punt of only 27 yards in the kicking game Texas could have the edge today 80,000 on hand here in Austin to watch Missouri take on Texas scoreless tie here in the first Terry Gannon Jamal Anderson and uh, Mac Brown of the Longhorns trying to come back off of that loss to Oklahoma no matter how many times you say it we're going to come back it's you know we're, we're going to be able to get back up they gear so much of their season toward the Oklahoma game yeah they do which is unfortunate because so much of the attention is focused on that one loss every year but they have a tremendous record after that the last four times we showed the graphic they were on the road and they won and now they're finally at home. So everybody was excited to see this team come back and want to see this team bounce back and see what they can do. Long drive on their first series, but the fumble by Cedric Benson. He has the carry across midfield to the 49 of Missouri. We talked to Mac Brown about just that, his approach after the Oklahoma game and, and coming back with his. Don't ever get beat, but if you do, don't let the same team beat you twice. Heard that from a number of players this week, too. Don't let the same team beat you twice. Ryan Carter. Wide open, great opportunity for Vince Young, but the throw was wide. You're talking about great opportunities. That would have been something right there that Vince Young could have built on. Now they're in a situation where it's third and seven. Come out and run Cedric Benson, try to get hit the fumble out of his memory. But it just misconnected right there. Brings up third and six, and Young needs to get something early to build that confidence. Yeah, no, I like what Brett Davis was doing. They were moving Vince Young all over the pocket. They had him run pass options a couple times in the first series, and they did a great job of getting down inside until the fumble. Going to roll out this time on third down, throws on the run, but behind his intended receiver, Tony Jeffrey. Go to New York, check in with John Saunders, right? All right, John, good one going on there. Heard John Daly talking about that matchup at the uh, Chrysler Classic in Greensboro yesterday. Big Arkansas fan. Fourth and six, so Texas to punt. Richmond McGee with Thompson and Boga back with a fair catch and a great bounce for the Longhorns. Inside the five, they're going to down it at the three. What a tremendous bounce. 46 yard punt. Richmond McGee has done that often this year. The Tigers backed up inside their own five yard line as they take over when we are in Austin. Yeah, it is a beautiful day, but unfortunately for Missouri, you talk about streaks you want to break. This is their third drive, and they're starting in worst field position each drive. They started in the 20, then the 10. Now they're on the three yard line. They have moved the football, not enough to uh, sustain a drive, but certainly to give them room. And the crowd now alive. 
Quick drop, and that one's picked off. Touchdown, Longhorns. Ryan Robinson, the sophomore from Splendor, Texas. That was a tremendous play by Brian Robinson. And this is a mistake that you do not see often with Brad Smith. He only has two interceptions this year, but he was staring at the receiver on the left side of the field the whole time. Brian Robinson makes a tremendous play for a defensive end. The guys who usually can't catch just jumps up and grabs the ball and walks it in for a touchdown. Can't get it done with your offense. It's a great way to do it in a hurry. Dusty Mangum on for the extra point. It's up and it is good. So the Longhorns struggling. They had the turnover on offense, a couple of poor passes, but defensively, you got the Tigers backed up. Robinson with the pick and the touchdown. Texas on the board first. 7 0. The Longhorns lead the Tigers here in Austin. First quarter and the pick and the touchdown after they had the Tigers backed up at the three. Jamal? Terry, you get a look right here. Brad Smith's eyes straight there, and this guy, Brian Robinson, is just waiting. As soon as Brad turns and throws the ball, he just jumps up and picks it out the air. Robinson, former middle linebacker, former H-back, a versatile guy who's played a lot of different spots for the Longhorns, and uh, putting the team up early on this one after they had Struggle on offense. Right, and that's Brad Smith's only third, it's, it's only his third interception of the football season, excuse me, versus 10 touchdowns, so it's rare. It doesn't happen a lot. Alex Woodley back three yards deep to a knee, and they'll bring it out to the 20 for Missouri. A little breather for Missouri in terms of starting field position. Yeah. He just talked about how they've been backed up almost every series. I think that they need to get, I mean, everything is run through Brad Smith, the quarterback, throwing the ball, and they've had a lot of play actions and waggles. They need to get Damian Nash more involved. This is a guy who averages over 90 yards a game and has seven touchdowns on the season. they got to find a way to get him involved in this offense and, and make Texas respect the ground attack. So the numbers on Smith today, got Damian Nash, the junior from St. Louis, in the backfield with him. Smith, the keeper, across the 30 up to the 34, and the Missouri's been able to move the football. No, they have been able to move the football, and again, you see a, a little play action waggle there, and Brad Smith keeps the football. Uh, you get a look at him right here. This is a guy I just talked about, Damian Nash, is going to come across right there, and Brad Smith keeps the ball, and he's got a great scene he cuts back into right there. And you watch at the end of that play, something that uh, Derek Johnson talked about. Everybody on this Texas defense goes after the football, so that may become a factor. I mean, and the quarterbacks who don't usually carry the ball, although Brad Smith is not one of them, you just got to hold on to the football. Needs nine yards to move into second place on that career list. Trying to get it right here. Caught along the sideline near the 40-yard line at the 39. Good catch. Brad Ekwer Ekwu, the sophomore from Arlington, Texas. That's the thing, Terry. You give this team an opportunity to be, you know, not one sided. You got to be able to throw the ball. You got to be able to pass the football, too. Brad Smith's coming really close to closing out on another Missouri milestone. Gain of six, so he still needs three to get to that second spot. Here's Nash hit hard by Johnson, but he gets across the 40 to the 41. That's redundant, saying you got to hit hard by Derek Johnson. Yeah, we figured to call Derek Johnson's name today a lot. He's the guy who's going to be shadowing Brad Smith, and he makes a tremendous amount of plays. You know, 64 tackles, or 65 now in the season, and seven forced fumbles this year and an interception. He's, he's all over the football field. I, I think, in my personal opinion, probably the best middle linebacker in football. Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator, we sent out our best to him and his family. His mother passed away. A few days ago, and must be tough for him to be on the sideline. There's a first down to move the chains. We go to John Saunders. People liking uh, Arizona State in that game after uh, the Trojans were tested last week. Yeah, they were. But anytime you got Reggie Bush on the football field, you, you get an opportunity to win games. He's like Michael Vick for college. Smith throws it away, and Boga was out there, but uh, he was just throwing that one to the second row. So the Trojans being tested last week. And Oklahoma tested on the road this week. Who would you vote for as number one right now? 
I just like Oklahoma. I think the Big 12 is really tough, although I think Cal is a tremendous football game. Had an opportunity to sit in there and watch that game last week with. Uh, That's right, you were at the game last Right, week. I was. And, and Cal's a tremendous football team, but uh, Oklahoma, to me, is just, is just the team to beat. Second and 10. Here goes Nash. A couple of quick moves across midfield to the 49. Nash, in his first year as a starter, came in with just under 500 yards. A reminder, Monday night, got Al Michaels, John Madden in the booth, of course. They'll be in St. Louis. Another edition of Monday Night Football, the Bucks and the Rams at 9 Eastern on ABC Sports. Who are you liking that one? I got to go with the Rams. I mean, how about the Rams last week against Seattle? Unbelievable football game. They, I thought it was over. I turned the game off, and all of a sudden they come back. And the numbers for Andre Bruce, over almost 11,000 yards. Quick swing out to Nash. Got a hole. Crossed the 35, knocked out of bounds at the 34. A flag comes in late. That would really be a tough penalty if it goes against Missouri, and it looks like it is. Damian Nash, the guy I just talked about a couple minutes ago, that they need to get more involved in this offense. Everything can't just go through Brad Smith. Jerry Pinkle in his fourth year, game over 500 at 21 holding, and 20. Holding, number 84, 10 yard penalty, and it remains third down. Randy Crystal and his Big 12 crew working the game here in Austin. Victor Cisse, not at all happy about the fact that they call out the numbers now. Yeah. Third and, third and long, I think that uh, we haven't heard or we haven't called Sean Coffey's name yet, and he's been the big target so far this year. Also, Martin Rucker in this situation has been key for Brad Smith. Now they go to their tight ends off third and 11. Out of the gun, Smith, plenty of time. Got a boga at the 40. If he holds on, yeah, he did. They call it a catch. He's got a first down for the Tigers. That's the thing about Missouri. They do have a lot of weapons. And they struggled last week like said, against Baylor, but they knew coming into this football game that this was the toughest test that they faced so far. And they're coming against a Texas team who's played, as we've said over and over, really, really well after the Oklahoma loss. And they're at home. So they know they got to continue to mix it up, keep Brad Smith on. And this is a guy that's going to be tough to stop. So there's the career passing yards after that completion. Smith in the second place and the, the amazing thing about Brad Smith too is before it's all said and done he may be their all time leader in terms of career rushing yards I think on the roll lofting it out incomplete he had Ekwa Ekwu as well as coffee down near the five and the trio of Longhorn defensive backs there as well. The thing that's really been interesting to me so far, as much as Brad Smith has been in the shotgun, we haven't seen, this is just the respect of his running ability. There hasn't been much pressure on him. He's had an opportunity to stand back there and look down his receivers and just pick his targets as he, at, his, at his will. They had two receivers in the same area and just barely dropped the pass there. Well, look, Giger coming over to help break it up. Second and 10. Inside give, there goes Nash, looks for a hole, nothing there. At the 40, he's popped. Aaron Harris, the middle linebacker, who makes a heck of a combo when you put him alongside Derek Johnson. Harris, the junior, who is the second leading tackler on this Longhorn defense. Yeah, you read a lot of stuff about how there wasn't a great tradition of Texas linebackers. Now you have Eric, Aaron Harris and, and Derek Johnson and Eric Hall, a lot of guys that they feel really strongly about, particularly Derek Johnson. Third and, third and nine. Big play here for the Tiger offense. Smith, the keeper going nowhere. He's going to lose one. No chance from the get go. Brian Robinson also, after that pick, doing a great job of keeping Smith behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you look at Brian Robinson right here, and, and Smith's going to. Faked it and try to win it again. And Brian Robinson just been the guy that's been in his face all day long. He comes in from the, the left side of the field and makes a great tackle right there. So Matt Haynes, the sophomore from Branson, Missouri, on the punt. Aaron Ross back deep. Only a 27 yarder from Haynes, who is the backup punter. Brock Harvey went down with a broken collarbone. And this time off the side of his foot. Let's see where they spot it. Up at the 21. Yeah, Aaron Ross was trying to spot it for him. 
Well, he gave him a lot of help, didn't he? So a punt of 21 yards after the opening punt only went 27 yards. So Haynes struggling in the early going. The Texas coaches, we talked to them yesterday, they talked about the fact that they thought they had the edge in the kicking game. It's played out so far. Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri on the hit. Terry, you can tell right now that Greg Robinson, offensive coordinator for Texas, is doing, I mean, the whole game plan right now is going through the quarterback, Vince Young. He's trying to get him off. You got the short passes. You have a lot of rollouts and waggles where he has options to run or pass. And it's just, it's just like, let's clear the last week's game. Let's get you back on a roll. Let's get you going right now. Vince Young, some would say, and a lot's been written this week, somewhat of a, a younger version of Brad Smith. There's the reverse, looking to throw. Got a man deep, underthrown, a flag that completed it anyway. Inside the 20 yard line, Vince Young on the reception. And everything you read about Vince Young, they always talk about his athleticism, how he can play so many football fields, um, so many positions, excuse me, on the football field. And you get a look at Vince Young, the wide receiver right there. Ramon's Taylor, the freshman from Temple, Texas, the man who caught it on the reverse, he's going to throw it. And then Vince is just running down the football field, and he turns around and makes a tremendous play with the DB all over him and catches the ball backing up and falling. 48 yards from Taylor to Young. So if you're struggling throwing the football a little bit, Mix it up. Why I mean, not catch it? Trick plays. And you know what? It's, it's a dangerous trick play because Cedric Benson gets the hands off and then he pitches it out. And then you expect the wide receiver to make, make a judgment call and, and, and throw the ball, football field down the, excuse me, throw the ball down the football field to Vince Young. So they spotted at the 18, first and 10, flag on the play. Benson breaks through inside the five down to the two. And remember that flag. Will Allen with a good block to spring. His tailback. Temperatures in the mid 80s today here in Austin. Uh, certainly gets much warmer than this, but it is a little bit warm on the field. It does not appear like the flag Illegal is going to go against Texas. On the offense, it's going to be a five yard penalty. Had the running back, wide receiver, both moving. So they were both moving at the same time in the backfield. and. Uh, going to cost Texas not only five yards but the, the big gain by Benson. Yeah definitely Cedric's best run so far of the day and it would have been a huge boost for them. So while we have a moment a reminder Wednesday. Yeah we we've got a lot of good shows on ABC right now. Desperate Housewives. Young didn't go down. Lynch Young turns the corner inside the 10 inside the five leaps toward the end zone. The touchdown. He got there. What a run by Vince Young, who should have been down initially on the hit. Yeah, you know, which is crazy. I mean, it's a demoralizing play for a defensive end. When you have a clean shot on the quarterback and you take that shot at him, you get a look at Vince Young right here. He's just sitting back there. And Xavier Jackson, I believe, was going to come up and take a lick on him, but he didn't wrap up. James Excuse Kinney me, James on that Kinney. hit. James Kinney, the, the weak linebacker who's Mr. Everything for Missouri. Gets a clean shot on him and doesn't wrap up, and Vince bounces out of it and runs up the sideline for a touchdown. What a leap to, and to stay in bounds. The official hesitated to check with the other official to see, that, did he step out, did he not? There's the extra point. Dusty Mangum again up and good, but Young doing it all by himself. The Longhorns roll it. 14-0 and uh, an extraordinary uh, run. Uh, Kinney had him, just didn't wrap him up. Yeah, and that's why you hear defensive coordinators every week in these meetings. They go, we got to we work on the fundamentals. We got to work on the fundamentals. We got to get guys not just to hit, but to tackle and wrap guys up. And you get a look at Kenny, who has, uh, you know, guy 6'1", 240, has a clean shot on Vince Young, and he bounces off and, and breaks up the sideline for a touchdown. You're going to hate to watch that game tape this week. So it's first and 10 for Brad Smith and the Tigers. Looks for room. Nothing doing. Aaron Harris with another stop. Behind the line of scrimmage. So if you're Missouri now, 
and you're Dave Christensen, the offense coordinator. What are you trying to get done? What can you do? Well, I think the most important thing for this football team is to continue to move Brad Smith around the pocket, and you have to establish some type of running game because right now Texas is up by two touchdowns, and they know that they can just pin their ears back and blitz and keep a guy in the middle like Derek Johnson who's going to screen Brad Smith. Anytime he comes out the pocket, he'll be right there. So that's it for the first quarter. Back with the second after this message and a word from our ABC stations here in Austin. 14 nothing Texas over Missouri. Bebo doesn't look all that excited. Although it's, it's probably a good thing. Yeah. Just stay calm yeah. at this point. Don't forget you can interact on Enhanced TV right now at ESPN.com. So the first quarter all Longhorns. Tigers trying to change that. Damian Nash with a hole across the 25 out to about the 29 yard line. The junior from St. Louis has been Slow to get things going today, as has Brad Smith. He really hasn't been able to do uh, as much as he expected early against this Longhorn defense. Yeah, and you know, Brad Smith has had time in the pocket. Obviously, the guys in Texas and Greg Robinson, they're worried about his capability of running the football. But like I said earlier, Missouri's got to continue to try to mix it up. You got to get Damian Nash a little bit more involved and keep Brad Smith in the shotgun. After the gain of 10, it's third and one. Nash skips across and has the first down. So they'll move the chains. As we said, the temperature in the mid 80s today. For more on uh, the heat and the conditions down on the field, check in with Mark Morgan. Terry, as you mentioned, it is very warm down here on the field. The high is supposed to be at like 88 degrees, and obviously it's it's very humid. Twice this week, the Missouri team practiced in their indoor facility on Wednesday and Thursday. They cranked the heat up to try to mirror the conditions that the team expected to face here today. One Missouri official told me it was uncomfortable just standing in there, much less practicing. So we'll have to check and see if it takes its toll on the Tigers later on in the game. All right, Mark, got a little breeze today, so it does help keep the temperature down some. Long pass down to the 30, incomplete. Sean Coffey. You mentioned his name a little bit earlier, needed right. to get him involved, and uh, Brad Smith almost had him. Yeah, he's been the big play guy for this team all year long. Three touchdowns, 18 receptions, 310 yards, and you get a look at Brad Smith. Again, he's got time. Derek Johnson's bearing down, though. And uh, Michael Huff right there on his back. But could have had Coffey, that. Yeah, he, he could have definitely had that. You know, we in, in, in playing for the Atlanta Falcons, we had a thing that if you touch the football, you should catch the football. That's the old yeah. adage, right? Yeah. Michael Huff and Philip Giger on the coverage. Marcus Woods in for Nash after the 38. Go back to John in New York toward that Heisman Trophy. And it looked like a football team who've been listening to people say Oklahoma's number one in the country. Out of the gun is Smith. Somehow gets out, throws, and incomplete. But uh, don't know how he got out of the pile. Yeah, that's the thing. Brad Smith, just, just elusive guy. And you get a look at Derek Johnson right there. He's a guy who's been who's, who's told us yesterday, my job is to be shadowing Brad Smith everywhere he goes. If it looks like he's coming out of the pocket, I got to be there. You see Brad Smith st step up here under the pressure and then roll out. And then Derek Johnson, the best linebacker in college football, let me just put that out there, is uh, all over his back. And he said, I got to follow him. Wherever this guy goes, I'm going to be the one there on his back. Scary good is Johnson. Mentioned those seven forced fumbles already on the year. Punts of 27 and 21 yards from Haynes so far. Contact, no call. He booms this one, goes into the end zone. So a punt of 61 yards. He'd like to have it back to about 59. It'll come out to the 20 for the Longhorns when we come back to Austin. Back in Austin, the Longhorns rolling so far. 14 nothing over Missouri. And Vince Young having a terrific day, not necessarily passing the football, but right. he had a 48-yard reception well, and know. then the run to the end zone from 23 yards. 53 yards rushing, 12 yards passing, 48 yards receiving. You talk about getting a young quarterback off to a solid start. That's how you do it. Uh, penalty marker before the snap. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 51. You know, Terry, when we were talking to Vince Young yesterday, he said how when he's home and he's by himself, especially after losses, particularly Oklahoma, that he kind of, he may sulk and he may walk around and kind of feel sorry for himself. He said, but the minute he gets back around the team, he puts on a different face. He lets these guys know that he can, he exudes strength and confidence and that they should believe in him and that they're going to be fine. Only a sophomore, but you're right. He knows the fact that uh, as a quarterback, they take the direction from him. Here comes Benson. 
Big gain over the right side out to the 23. Good block from Casey Stuttered. Take a look right now at our Pacific Life game summary and the pick by Robinson from the three yard line and then the long pass from Taylor. Ramont's Taylor, the freshman, 48 yards, 23 yard run from Young, and it was all Young on that drive, and that's where we are, 14 nothing. So the, the offense sputtered a bit to start the game, but the defense putting seven on the board and got the offense going. Cedric Benson right now is probably the happiest man on the field. They got a 14 point lead. They know it's like grind time. Missouri showing blitz. There's the pitch out to Benson. Simpson read it perfectly. Jason Simpson, who had a big game last week, came up. You could see him anticipate before the snap. Yeah, and you know, Greg Davis said yesterday, this is a guy, Jason Simpson, that they put him in a position to make football plays. You get a look at the Missouri defense here against Colorado. They swarm around. They create a lot of turnovers. They make a lot of plays. And Gary Pinkle said it best. This is finally our football team. After years of recruiting, we finally have our guys in. He said the first time he got here, they only had one scholarship cornerback on the whole football team. Yeah, they've got their recruits in now, and, and many of them from the state of Texas. They have 23 players on this roster from Texas. Young on the roll, lofts it out to Jeffrey, but threw it out of bounds. No chance. Now, so he can get a little bit more control in his rollout and his passes. He has all the ability, but you got a guy wide open down the football field. You just kind of lay it up there and let him run under that football. Yeah, earlier in the first, he had Brian Carter wide open, but because he was rolling, sailed it. But you look at what Missouri has done from last year to this year, 64th to 8th in total defense, and they do lead the Big 12 in total defense. But Matt, and McGee on the defensive coordinator Matt Eberflus said it best yesterday. This is the best team that we faced so far. Yeah. He said without a doubt. He said you know we've had some challenges in certain situations. He said but we haven't seen a football team like Texas. This is going to be a test. Thompson and Boga going to get away from this one as it takes a Longhorn bounce. That thing landed at midfield, bounced all the way to the 33. So a punt of 45 yards for Richmond McGee. And time. To ask you our Aflac trivia question. Five players in NCAA Division I history they have four straight 1,000 yard rushing seasons. Do you know who they are? We'll give you the answer a little bit later. Don't forget, you can interact on Enhanced TV now at ESPN.com. Cedric Benson with a chance to do that. In fact, he will do that right. unless, barring injury, he could right. do it today. Yeah, he has a, he has a, what, he was 162 yards coming into this football game from crossing a thousand yard barrier. He's got 48 today. So inching closer to that. Marcus Woods in that tailback. Smith's going to keep it though, bounces outside. Looks for room to the near sideline and run out at the 37 smart move Brad no, don't take any unnecessary hits you know quarter uh, Dave Christensen I'm sure up in the booth is like please get out of bounds when he sees eight eight or nine guys from Texas chasing after his quarterback you didn't have that luxury in, in no. your career well, yeah, in, fact, in, in, in fact if I did somebody somebody would remind me on the sideline that I missed an opportunity to try to hit somebody from your own team absolutely yeah, right. what are you running out of bounds for so I didn't I definitely didn't have that luxury Gain of three, so it's second and seven. Plenty of time for Smith. Flips it out to Victor Cisse, one of his big tight ends, across the 40 to the 41 before he's wrapped up by Aaron Ross. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. 1050 and counting until halftime. So Gary Pinkle's club with a third and three. It's a great down and distance for them, especially since they've been doing a lot of the run pass option. Give Brad Smith a chance to do whatever he wants. Texas on the blitz and Smith goes down. Got a penalty. And a marker as well. Eric Hall shot through there. 12 men. Can't do that. No. Andy Crystal and his crew will discuss this. Yeah, I heard of playing uh, good defense, but <laughs> you can't you can't bring in extra guys. No, they're going to catch you most of the time.
Too many players participating on defense. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty. The gain is sufficient for a yeah. first down. So they'll move the chains, and uh, Mac Brown and Greg Robinson on the sideline. Count them. There you go. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yep. <laughs> no. No wonder they couldn't block the twelfth guy. Exactly. I mean, I know Brad Smith is dangerous, but. <laughs> Nice try, Greg. Nice try. In his first year and uh, plenty of NFL experience for Greg Robinson. He was at NC State back when I was there. Back in the early 80s. There goes Smith. Breaks through. Still on his feet. Finally broke. Brought down at the 17. Longhorn helmets flying as well. And uh, I can hear Greg Robinson in his headphones saying, you see why I put 12 people on the football field. <laughs> Look at Brad Smith here again. The, the run pass option, you little fake right there. He's got the big tight end leading for him. Martin Rucker makes a nice block. Big block from Tony Clinker. Tony Clinker. Smart. Just stays behind his guy, stays in the seam, follows his blockers down the field. Kind of got his hand on the back, like, hey, big boy, you take me there. Gain of 26. And there are the numbers on Smith. So 52 yards on the ground, 63 in the air. He did throw the one interception, and that, of course, with a touchdown for the Longhorns. Clinker shaken up after throwing the good block. Yeah, Missouri has been able to move the football. They just haven't been able to close. They haven't been able to get points on the board. Uh, you know, Brad Smith has been in the shotgun, and he's done a lot of the, the waggle run pass options, and he's kept the ball, and obviously the statistics show it, but they just have not been able to close. They get in these situations, and Texas just buckles down and shuts them down. They've actually moved it well on first and second down. They really have. The key third down situations, they haven't been able to convert. Brad Smith has got it down to the 18 now and heard from John about Matt Leinart and uh, USC and maybe he is the uh, favorite for the Heisman at this point Jason White people are not really talking about him right now because he had 113 yards last week against Texas right a lot of people talking about Adrian Peterson a lot of people talk about Kyle Horton out in Purdue it's gonna be a big game see what he can do today. Marcus Woods bringing it back, bounces off one inside the 15 to the 13. Woods, the red shirt freshman out of Farmington Hills, Michigan. He's split in time with Damian Nash. Get a good look at the block right here. You see Marcus following his guys around the horn. Again, Rucker makes a nice block right there. And he just, you know, when you got a guy that's 5'8, 185, a la Warwick Dunn, they kind of slide under tackles and get three or four extra yards where a bigger back wouldn't be able to do that. I bring up the Heisman, though, in terms of Brad Smith. You think his name is no longer. I think, of Brad, I mean, you know, obviously this game's 14 0 right now, but if Brad Smith has a tremendous game and somehow this football team wins this game, he's definitely back in the Heisman contention. You have to throw him back in. Woods inside the 10, down to the 8, near a first down. We'll see. We'll definitely see that play again because after Brad Smith handed off, they didn't respect him, and he ran on the right side of the football field, and he was by himself. Gain of four. Missouri, by the way, three of seven on uh, third down. Tommy Clinker is uh, back in the wide tackle. He was injured on that big game by Brad Smith. So here comes the crowd. I would definitely be aware of where the tight end Martin Rucker is because Brad Smith likes him in these situations. Woods trying to bounce outside, struggles, and we'll see where they spot it. Where he ends up, he should have the first down, but we'll see. Yeah, you see Derek Johnson makes a nice play right there, but like I said, little running back. I mean, Marcus Woods kind of squeaks through that, runs through the arm tackle, and, and just dives forward and appears to have gotten the first down. First down. Don't forget, coming up on the Valvoline Halftime Show, you got John Craig and Aaron Taylor with highlights and analysis from today's big games. There are plenty of them around the country, including that Arizona State-USC matchup out west. For the guys coming up in just a few moments. 8.33 and counting, actually a little more than a few moments. Woods bounces back inside, drilled at the three-yard line. That's where you can tell. That's where that 185 pounds 
is detrimental to your health. Larry Dibbles weighs about 285 going up against Woods, who's 185. Yeah, you get a look at him. Brassman pass, hands it off to Woods. Woods makes a nice cut right inside, but you got Dibble right there and just puts a nice smack on him. Shoulder pads turn, he's immediately going to the ground. Game of five, however. Second and goal from the three. Out of the gun. Smith lost one. Eric Johnson again made sure Smith couldn't go anywhere. He's shadowing him and he's gonna be on him all day long. So anytime you get a you get a look at it and you see Derek Johnson right here, as soon as he sees Brad Smith keep the ball, he's gonna pursue him and come right after him. How strong is he when he can get one arm out? And Brad Smith is a guy who's 210 pounds and slow him down and almost spin him around with just his arm. Butkus semifinalist, and he's got to be the favorite for that Butkus award at this point in the season. No doubt about it. Third and goal, but now from the fourth. Quick drop. Smith throws to the end zone. Touchdown. Sean Coffey, the junior from East Cleveland, Ohio, with the catch. So Coffey, the leading receiver on the year. Well, you got to know in those situations, Brad Smith is looking at two guys. Sean Coffey is leading receiver, and he's going to look for Martin Rucker to tight end. And those two guys that Texas has to know in that situation, if they're going to throw the football, they got to keep an eye on. Joe Tantarelli, the junior from Santa Rosa, California, on for the extra point. Brad Smith, your holder. <laughs> Up and good. So the Tigers on the board. First catch of the day for Sean Coffey in the end zone. 14-7 minutes off the clock. And the Missouri Tigers right back in this. 14-7 Texas here in Austin. Terry Gannon, Jamal Anderson, and Mark Morgan with you. Terry, I'm a little bit surprised that Cedric Benson only has eight carries. Now, I know Missouri comes into this football game with the, the top rank, the th excuse me, number three, rushing defense in the conference but Cedric Benson is the number two overall rusher in all of football yep. and, and just to have eight carries right now uh, I know they had the fumble exchange I'm just a little bit surprised Longhorns will bring it out to the 20 we gave you the Aflac trivia question a little while ago five players in NCAA Division one history to have four straight 1,000 yard rushing seasons Ron Dane of course for the Badgers Tony Dorsett or do you call him Dorsett Dorsett part of his career he was Dorsett and you look at these names, another one could join them, including Amos Lawrence. That's what our statistician John Madry, a Carolina grad, wants to point out. You could have another one up there, and that would be Cedric Benson, who is uh, very close to 1,000 yards for the year. Got the carry here, but not much going on across the 20 to the 21. James Kinney on the tackle in that time. James Kinney wraps up. So he needs 30. That's two, progression. 1,053, 1,293, 1,360, now 870 already in this season. He only needs 30 yards for 1,000. Yeah, two fumbles today, though. One a giveaway. You got one back, but second drive of the game, he caught one up. Yeah. Good. Quick throw and complete out to the tight end, David Thomas. Jamal? You talked about the, the two fumbles, but... Uh, you know, the first one, Brian Carter was trying to make a block, and Cedric Benson obviously not anticipating contact with his own teammate. And Brian gets a hit on his elbow, and it's tough. I mean, yeah, the, the fumble's going to get uh, charged to Cedric Benson, but that's a tough play. And then the second one was on the exchange. I and mean, this is a guy who really can ill afford to have these happen because, because of the two fumbles last week and everybody talking about how he's fumbled so much lately. And then our mistake, he needs 130 yards, not, not 30 yards, 4,000. Math, not a strong suit. We're giving Cedric Benson yards. Young. Quick out, and that one's picked off. Shadonre Mitchell with the interception. Just like that, Missouri with great field position. You got to know, I mean, Shadonre is the guy who leads his team in interceptions. That's his fourth on the season. Uh, Vince Young sits back, and he's staring at him, and, and, the, and the receiver just stops in the middle of the route, and Shadonre Mitchell right there makes a great play. You look at a Swede here. Just kind of shuts it down on the slant, doesn't follow through. It must have been some mis miscommunication as to what he thought Cedric Benson was going to do and what Cedric Benson thought he was going to do. 
leads the Big 12 and kicks. That's his fourth, as you said, on the year. Had one last week in the win over Baylor, and now this is huge. I mean, Cedric Benson was throwing, uh, excuse me, Vince Young was throwing a slant, and Lyman Swede was running a curl. Under center now, Brad Smith. Umboga in motion. Damian Nash cuts back out a big hole to the outside. He is gone. Goodbye. Nash to the end zone, 33 yards. I'm not one to pat myself on the back, but I said you have to get Damian Nash involved. I thought for Purdue to have success, yeah, Brad Smith is the guy, but you have got to be able to mix it up. You have to make Texas respect the run, and you get a look right there. This is a guy who's averaging 10.5 points a game. He's number two in the Big 12 in scoring, and he's scored another touchdown there. But all off the pick by Mitchell, and this is a defense that lives on creating turnovers. Tenerelli on for the extra point. Up, good, new ball game. 14 all. 11 turnovers created by Missouri in the last three games. Nash takes it to the house. We're on top. Tiger cheerleaders with something to cheer about right now. It was 14 nothing just a few moments ago, but in the span of a minute 30, two touchdowns on the board for the Tigers. This is a beautiful thing right here. You watch the block right here, the wall by Scott, Scott Prefath right there, and then you watch Martin Rucker wall this guy out, and this is going to give him a big lane. You see the cutback right here, and then watch. Coming in the end of the screen, you're going to see Sean Coffey wall off right there. And Jamal, you talked earlier in the game about the quickness of the Texas defense and trying to take advantage of that overrunning plays at times. Definitely, and that's one thing Derek Johnson said. The biggest thing Greg Robinson did for him is help him slow the game down, but he's focusing so much on Brad Smith, and in some situations you get caught up. And, and really, uh, they have not, Missouri has not run the ball effectively all day with the exception of what Brad Smith has done. Little extracurriculars at the end of this play, the end of the kick, which went out of the end zone, and the flag out near the 15. They can go either way with this because both teams were drawn back and forth and uh, plenty of pushing. Robert Killebrew is involved from Texas, picked out his number. We'll see. Dead ball, personal foul on both teams. Number 19, Missouri. Number 40, Texas. The penalties canceled by rule, first and 10. So Brandon Massey and uh, Robert Killebrew, and they did go. To both sides for that. Yeah, the headbutt. And there it is at the end. So, first and ten, after it's all said and done, first and ten at the 20. Yeah, that wasn't a bad block by Robert Massey. He's supposed to drive him into the ground. And he got a little bit upset that he, he got drove into the ground. Wouldn't we all? 527 until halftime. Young giving it off. Down the one knee at the 22 goes Benson. Donnie Mitchell, the big interception a moment ago. More on him right now. We go to Mark. Mitchell is out of here. He will be flown to Missouri ASAP to witness his child's birth. Can't wear a pager or carry a cell phone on the field. So uh, somebody on the sideline is going to have to be doing that. Look at Jason Simpson covering very quickly out near the 24-yard line. Yeah, Will Matthews makes a catch in the flat. You know, they're just trying to give Vince Young any type of rhythm, and Jason Simpson is right there to make the tackle. Simpson's had a couple of big plays already in this game. Yes. And last week against Baylor. Watch the, the pick he had. Taking it almost all the way back. Yeah, well, you know, Missouri at this point in the game, they weren't really doing anything offensively, and that kind of sparked them. It was a really, really close game at that point. Simpson ran it all the way back and didn't score, but it helped Missouri in the next play they scored. Big third down for Vince Young and the long runs. This one's kicked off again. Reno Williams going to bring it back inside the 35. Lost the football. They're going to whistle him down. So it was dead. Vince Young is still down. And he got popped after he released it and probably shouldn't have released it. I tell you what, it almost looked like a punt. You get a look at Vince Young right here. He drops back and it seems like he has time and the pocket collapses and he stands in there and that was a late hit. Should have been flagged? Definitely. I mean, the ball is clearly gone. The ball's gone. Oh, you're right. The guy takes two steps into him. Gosh, he shouldn't have thrown that football. That was, you know, I don't understand why he throws that ball and he throws that ball into the middle of the football field. 
Nino Williams brought it back 23 yards. So even though it was third down and you say yeah at times you throw it downfield it's like a punt not not in that situation right. you didn't throw it far enough. Well I mean if, you, if you're going to throw that football you got to throw it to the right the, the outside of your receiver's shoulder especially when you have a safety a deep safety in the middle. Chance Mock the senior from the Woodlands Texas warming up. Yeah the hit was late. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, Vince's, the ball is gone, and he takes three steps, and Vince, uh, David Richard takes three, two or three steps into him after the ball is gone and cleans his clock. All three Texas turnovers coming on third down. It's got interceptions and a fumble. So Missouri again taking over in a similar spot than they did just a moment ago. Creating turnovers, that's the way they've won games. Brad Smith. Hit hard. <laughs> Derek Johnson just crushed it. Hey, you know, we've said it a couple times, Terry, but anytime he comes out of the pocket, I expect to see number 11 on him. Get a look at Derek Johnson right here. As soon as he sees Brad Smith commit to the run, he's not looking at anybody or anything but Brad Smith and stopping him. Maybe not a full spy on Smith, but close to it today is Johnson. Yeah. Play action. Smith bounces out. Off balance. Just threw it away. Almost went down. Well behind the line of scrimmage. And again, Johnson was all over. Him. Right. Athleticism and talent, though. Brad Smith, how you get out of that. I mean, any other quarterback in the nation, particularly drop back passers, they're going to be sacked right there. You see him fake the handoff and step up and then kind of step out of that. And again, you know, they got pressure on Brad Smith from Brian Robinson, the guy who picked up the pass early and made the sack, and Brad Smith is on him again. Roderick Wright also part of that pressure. Derek Johnson already with five tackles and a number of pressures. Swing pass out. There goes Nash trying to bounce outside. They wrap him up at the 27. Aaron Ross, the cornerback from Tyler, Texas, and a sophomore on the initial hit. This is going to be an interesting call because the kicker, the field goal kicker, early in the season was great, and then he went to a streak where he missed like three or four in a row, and then he was three or four last week, but uh, in a fourth and four with uh, a little over two minutes to go in the second half, Missouri's going to go for it. Fourth and five, we're going to call it. Uh, to get to the 23, just inside of it. Smith out of the gun. Plenty of time initially, and that one's picked off. The Longhorns bringing it back. Aaron Ross got a chance. To the 12. Just steps in front of it again. You, you, Brad Smith is kind of just staring to that side of the football field, and everybody defensively for Texas, without him looking receivers off, which he hasn't done much of today, gets an opportunity to get a jump on the ball. He's just staring on the right side the whole time, and Aaron Ross just jumps in front of the pass. Didn't look like Smith ever saw Ross. It was right in back of Thompson and Boga, the intended. Two receivers in the same area, just a little bit too close. Even if he would have completed the pass, I don't know if they would have got the first down. Ross brought it back 64 oh, yards, yeah, and eventually Aboga made the hit. So now Chance Mock on for the injured Vince Young. Longhorns operating out of the eye. Benson hit behind the line of scrimmage. Atia Ellison. The senior on the stop. So 207 and counting before halftime. Terry Gannon, Jamal Anderson, Mark Morgan here in Austin, Texas, Royal Memorial Stadium on a gorgeous day. And it was 14 to nothing, Longhorns, before the defense started to take over for Missouri. Missouri yeah, and you know, that last play, Atia, who they affectionately call Atia the Hun, Ellison. Makes a great stop. They've been getting a lot of penetration on the inside. And it's been shutting Sidney Benson down for the roll. There goes Benson to the end zone. Can't 
shut him down forever. No, that's the thing. I, I don't understand. Even in, he's had some success running the football, but he hasn't gotten a lot of opportunities to run. I know you respect what Missouri can do defensively, and they come in the big third in the Big 12, holding the opponents under 100 yards rushing, but you have a second best rusher statistically. In college football, arguably the best, you have got to give them an opportunity to make plays. Benson with 63 yards in the game on 12 carries, and now the touchdown. Dusty Mangamon for the extra point. Perfect again. So you bring in Chance Mock, more of a thrower than Vince Young, and you keep it on the ground, he gets it. 21-14. Minute 36 left until halftime. Texas with the strike from Cedric Benson. The 13 yard run. 21 14 the score right now. And just a moment ago Vince Young left the field and heading to the locker room. He was injured on that last uh, interception that he threw the last series. Mark Morgan do you have more. Yeah Terry walked by me a minute ago. Uh, I watched Vince ever since he came out of the game. He was grimacing on the sidelines. There were three or four trainers who were uh, in, analyzing his midsection having him take some deep breaths and the official word is that he will be reevaluated as we all saw took that vicious hit to the midsection could be reevaluated at halftime. His status as we speak is unknown for the second half. Yeah, it looked like he got the wind knocked out of him initially, but he spent some time on the ground. Yeah, you never want to see a guy go out of the game because of an injury. But uh, obviously, the reaction from this crowd when Chance Mock came in, and Chance Mock being the guy who, who has more experience throwing the football. Alex Woodley bringing it out across the 20, but uh, there is a flag on the play. And we'll sort that out. There you go. Backing up the Tigers. As a two-time Pro Bowl defensive tackle, Patriots Richard Seymour is an expert in the art of the quarterback sack, of course, but find out how little he knows about the receiving end when Troy Brown turns the tables on this week's edition of Monday Night Football's You've Been Sacked. Do you like that? I do. I it's do. Pretty good. They, they, they have a lot of fun, which is cool, because people get an opportunity to see guys off the field and yeah. see their personalities, because that's what everybody talks about. You guys always have on helmets, and we, you know, so I think it's a lot of fun. Tough to get the no players in football because of that, but you're right. Again, Missouri starting off with terrible field position, eight yard line, minute 32 left in the half. Marcus Woods in the backfield, keeps the legs moving across the 10 to the 11 yard line. So Woods and Nash both uh, splitting time, and actually Woods got the start today. Yeah, he did, and you know he's obviously he's come in the game and, and and done some things. But Damian Nash has been the big guy; he's been the main runner for this football team. I'm a little bit surprised. I know Brad Smith has all the athleticism, and he's rushed for you know 2,800 yards. But how he's been staring down receivers in this football game, I and mean, both of those turnovers as a result of he just looks one direction and doesn't take his eyes off that target, and, and the Texas guys are just jumping it. Longhorns call timeout. They want it back before the break. Step first down. Love to get Get it back and keep Missouri, first of all, backed up uh, in their own territory. Brad Smith, the numbers 73 yards in the air, 50 on the ground. Yeah, but the indicator of that first play, Missouri comes out running the ball. They seem to be content to kind of just run out the clock and, and regroup and go in and try to do something in the second half. See if they can. Minute 19. And it off to Woods. Wrapped up at the 12. Will they burn another timeout? You would expect them to, and they do. So the Longhorns call another one. Norman Satchel on the hit, the junior from Denver. Don't forget the Valvoline halftime show coming up from New York. Scores and highlights from all the action around the country. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna have to be careful here because obviously Mac Brown is intent on trying to get the football back and get some points on the board. He's doing really, really well. But I don't know about my wife and her friends watching it. it it's great because, you know, the fact that we work for, <laughs> for ABC, yeah. I actually had a few people ask me, can you get me on the set of Desperate right, Housewives? Right. As if I, you know, had that pull and yeah. as if I wouldn't be there. If, I had that. Pulse. Yeah, you know what? I think it's fine. And I, and I, like I said, I got dragged into watching it last week, and I was like, okay, it's pretty interesting. As long as they don't try, as, as long as uh, reality does not imitate art, you know. As long on your as you, block, yeah, exactly. Minute 11 until halftime as Brad Smith 
brings the offensive unit on the field and Derek Johnson who has been all over Smith through much of this first half brings the defense out third and six for the Tigers Longhorns would love to get another shot before the break yeah Missouri has to get the first down on this play because Texas is intent on trying to get the ball back and, and kick a field goal and score points Bo Veeman over walking on, they fake it to him. Smith wrapped up at the 15. They're going to get it back. Yeah, they definitely are going to get it back, and they're going to get it back with maybe 55 or more seconds. Longhorns burn their last time out. And so they're going to get it back one way or another. Larry Dibbles in on the hit, and we'll be back to Austin. And so you set up the return here if you're Mac Brown, or you go after uh, Matt Haynes, the punter. Well, I, you, I think you go after the punter, but even if you don't get it, you're going to have an excellent opportunity for a return because of where he's standing on the football field. Even if he fair catches the ball, they're going to get the ball in great field position. And they blow the whistle. Missouri wants to uh, talk it over on their sideline. So Gary Pickle maybe saw something in that uh, alignment. Back 64 yards to set up that last touchdown by Cedric Benson. Yeah, these two guys, uh, Vince Young and Brad Smith, were roommates this summer at Steve McNair's camp, and I don't think this summer they had any conversations about let's both throw two interceptions when we face each other in Austin. Oh, you think? Yeah, they talk actually on a weekly basis, and uh, Smith, obviously the veteran, he's a junior and has offered plenty of advice to to Young. But uh, the two are, are very good friends. Yeah, they are. And, you know, it's unfortunate to see Vince Young go out of this football game. But I tell you right now, everybody in this stadium is going to be anxious to see what Mac Brown does and what Chance Mock can do with this time before the half. Johannes so back on. Trying to go after him. Didn't get there. Aaron Ross back at his own 41. Going to reverse field. Better get out May have been a mistake, yeah. and he's all the way back to the 37. That's not what you want to do. No, no. He, 13 seconds he took off the clock uh, running around the football field. He should have just ran out of bounds right there. Justin Scott on the hit. So it's first and 10 Longhorns at the 39. With 52 seconds left until half. But Haynes was in trouble. Watch the bobble. Yeah, really, if Texas was coming after him, that would have that would have been the, the key right there. If, if they were really if they really yeah. had a all blitz going, they would have blocked that punt. So Chance Mock gonna get a chance to show uh, what he can do here with the last 53 seconds. Out of the gun, Mock steps up. Hit, that's a fumble. Recovered by the Longhorns. That's Jonathan definitely not Scott. what everybody in this uh, stadium wanted to see Chance Mock do. No, Jonathan Scott got it back, but Brian Smith on the hit to cause the fumble. Yeah, you see Brian Smith coming around there and Chance trying to reset, and Brian Smith sacks him. Smith had three sacks in the game last week against Baylor. So Mock trying to communicate with his receivers now. Yeah, Brian Smith, the guy who had 35 sacks his senior year in high school. So that's all he does is go after the quarterback. It's not a misprint. No. Matt Eberflus told us yesterday that in third and long or first and long or any long down situations, they were going to come after him and bring Brian Smith out. A few boos you hear in uh, the stadium because Mac Brown's going to let the time run off the clock. Mock's not going to get another chance. They don't want a mistake to bring it back for Missouri before the half. So. Max going to talk to his quarterback and they have yet to leave the field the official still out there and the, the ball is still down at the 26 yard line. Yeah I, I think that was a smart move uh, you know obviously Mac Brown intended to try to come out and there do something. Are three seconds left in the half we have a dead ball delay offense. So everyone left prematurely still got three seconds on the clock. And obviously they're just going to run that out. Right. I mean, like I said, Mac Brown. Obviously they were going to come out and try to do something. But then when you get a when you get a sack and a and a guy fumbling the ball in the first play, you just kind of cut your losses. You go in the game at halftime with a seven point lead. And Mac, St. Chance, just take a knee. 
I would believe. Maku split time with Young last year. And they hand it off. Not sure why you do that, but I would have probably pitched it. Take a shot? Yeah, well, I mean, no, I pitch it outside to Cedric Vinson. You give him an opportunity to run down the sideline. Run, run off that. Smith, the story coming in. We talked about them being roommates at Steve McNair's summer camp this past summer. Take a look at what's happened with them today. Yeah, you see Vince Young, they've done a lot of moving them around the pocket, running the ball. You saw the trick play there, and then the great athletic play of scoring a touchdown. And then when he got popped, he's going off the football field. And you get a look at Brad Smith, who's also made some football plays, first play of the game, moving the ball around. Running in the pocket, throwing in the pocket, but he's had the two turnovers as well. But it's Chance Mock who starts under center, and Longhorns operate out of the eye to open up the second half. Cedric Benson bounces past one and fights his way up to the 38-yard line. Marcus Bacon, the outside linebacker from Houston on the hit. Mock, the senior from the Woodlands, Texas, and certainly more experience, especially throwing the football than Vince Young. Yeah, he is, and that's what all the talk in the paper was about, the ineffectiveness of Vince Young last week and then throughout the season, how he hasn't been able to throw the ball consistently and that they might need to get Chance Mock in more. And uh, Coach Brown has been hesitant to do that. He believes in the young quarterback, and unfortunately today he's out of the game, so Chance gets his opportunity. Mac Brown also did not want to ruin the confidence of Vince Young after a tough performance last week against Oklahoma, but he's injured. There goes Benson. He could go. Cedric Benson going to bring it all the way to the house. There is a flag on the play. A penalty marker back at the 40-yard line. Holding. Going to bring this back. There is nothing worse. On a long touchdown, but just a, not a holding. Uh, holding. Number 72, offense. Give me a 10 yard penalty, replay second down. So, as a former Pro Bowler, what do you say to your right tackle, Will Allen, after that? I mean, what, you, what can you say? Will makes a, he's trying to make a great block. You see him right there, clearly has his arm on the jersey, tackling the guy. Yep. Gives Cedric Benson an opportunity to get out. And the thing is, Cedric is so quick and so explosive, he probably would have got away from that anyway. There's Allen, the junior from Houston. And Benson. Well, now everybody in the stadium knows who Will Allen is. Not like in the past. Yeah. But Benson would have gone, I believe, with that run. Oh, 61 yards. And coming into the game, a chance to go over 1,000 yards. He came in with 838 yards and trying to go four straight years, as we told you. With over a thousand yards rushing, only five other men have done that. Division 1A, Mock, quick throw, throws it right by Lima Swede. Not a good one for Chance Mock to open up the second half. Our Pacific Life games of moving the football, the Missouri did a better job of it with 212 total yards, but again, the, the turnovers three for Texas and two for Missouri. They were keys. Right, they were definitely keys. And like we said, we knew coming into this football game, the Missouri is a defense that creates turnovers and they capitalize on them, but I, I really wasn't expecting Brad Smith to turn over the ball twice. Mock on third down. Quick throw. Sweet overthrows the intended receiver. The coverage out there by David Overstreet. So he's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, you had to know when we when we got Gary Pinkle, you look at the Missouri defense, you know, first in the conference overall today. They only given up 176 yards, scoring defense are number one, three touchdowns, 21 points already today. And then the passing defense and rushing defense are right on key. Now the tough thing is going to be this stat right here. How are they going to be able to contain Cedric Benson for the rest of the game? And the defense really hasn't given up 21 points. No. The, the two picks right. that Brad Smith has thrown. Thompson from Boga back deep and his own 30. Well, you knew when uh, we got Gary Pinkle coming in at halftime, how he talked about, well, we'll see if we're going to go after Chance Mock. Well, absolutely, they've gone right after Chance Mock two times that he's dropped back to pass. And the second, second time, he had a guy blitzing right in his face. 42-yard punt by Richmond McGee. No return. McGee did a great job last week, keeping Antonio Perkins under control. So Missouri takes over in a sense, especially the crowd a little restless right now, almost 80,000 on hand, that Missouri has done a better job controlling this football game 
to this point. So his numbers right now in the game. Damian Nash straight ahead, strong running up to the 37. Yeah, you want to talk about a key? I think every time today Brad Smith has been under center, they have run the football. I think that would be an indication if I was a Texas defender. As soon as you see him walk under the center, hey, this is a running play. Can hurt you a number of ways, but this year Brad Smith doing less running than he's done throwing. Been great in the third quarter throughout the year, 35 to 3. But they haven't faced an opponent like the Texas no. Longhorns. Larry Dibbles, defensive tackle from Lancaster, Texas, down, shaken up on the play. They got to hope that Larry Dibbles only going to be out for a couple plays because he's been all over the football field today. Well, Missouri coming into the game four and one. Overall, but 2 0 oh in the Big 12. Only the second time that's happened since 96 when the Big 12 was formed, and they are on top of the standings in the north as Dibble walks off. Good sign for the Longhorns. And Texas, of course, even up at 1 and 1 in the Big 12 after last week's loss to Oklahoma. Opening moments of the second half here in Austin, Texas. Like to welcome those of you that have been watching Arizona State and USC. Terry Gannon along with Jamal Anderson and Mark Morgan. And the defense has told the story so far in this one. Three turnovers for Texas, two turnovers for Missouri. And Brad Smith, the junior from Youngstown, Ohio, has been able to move the football today, but not really come up with a big play. Third and one coming up as you look at all the points off of turnovers. Smith keeps it, fights his way, should have a first down as he crosses the 40. Terry, when you started that, you should have said, you should have welcomed all the people who were watching USC. Because it looked like it was a, a one-way game out there. No Arizona today. State fans watching, even though it's No, a, I'm just saying USC is just, God. So it throws two interceptions. Here comes Smith, looks for room, dances around across the 45 to the 46 before Aaron Harris wrapped him up, a gain of five. And Brian Robinson, the, the sophomore defensive end for Texas with a big interception went down near the goal line. He just waltzed in for a touchdown, and that was the big play for Texas, turning things around early. They led 14 to nothing, but back came Mizzou. Yeah, and this, this is a great situation right here for Missouri. Brad Smith, you give him a lot of options. Again, he's walking under center, and they got three wide receivers flanked out. First time they've passed out of that alignment, second and five. A lot of time on the rollout for Smith. Closes quickly, though. Down near the original line of scrimmage. Throw the ball away. I don't understand that. Why, why even get close to I mean, if you can get back to the line of scrimmage, fine, but you got three defenders coming after you. Just continue to roll out. Don't take the hit, Brad Smith. Because they need you not just in this game, but for the rest of the season. And throw the ball out of bounds. Smith a little shaken up. On the play. Over a thousand yards in the air coming into this game. And 300 yards on the ground for Smith, who could be the all-time leading rusher when it's all said and done. And there's Vince Young, who was, was knocked out of the game in the first half. And uh, is warming up on the sideline very quickly. Let's go to John Saunders. And they fall to three and three. Oof. I mean, who would have thought? You get a look right here, Vince Young gonna try to dive back to the line of scrimmage and it's wow, painful. It looked like his neck got popped forward, his helmet and neck snapped forward a little bit. Well, it's Brandon Coleman, a sophomore from Miami. Played in three games, actually threw a pass last week against Baylor, playing in that win. Maybe a Nash dropped. At the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he's only thrown six passes all season long, so you know coming in maybe for a play or for a short period of time is not it's not the first instinct that they're gonna drop back and, and give him an opportunity to throw the ball. Well Matt Haynes will come on to punt. Aaron Ross back at his own 15-yard line awaiting for the Longhorns. Anus, who struggled early in the game, had punts of 27 and 21 yards, then boomed a 61 yarder. This is a good one. Ross lets it go, a chance to down it. At the two. That went into the end zone, yeah. and they do uh, finally. Right. 
It straddled yep. the uh, goal line. It was obviously it was a back. apparent it went in, but uh, the delayed reaction from the official. So they'll bring it out to the 20 at the punt of 54 yards. Talk about the big plays that are made all the time. Here's one that wasn't by Marcus King on the punt. Yeah, Marcus King is a good cornerback, but he's got to be a great wingman. In this situation, when you got a tight game, 21-14, field position is critical. And if he gets in front of that ball, Texas has the ball on the one-yard line instead of the 20. A chance mock comes out under center. Cedric Benson, the lone setback on first and 10 from the 20 for the Longhorns, leading by seven. Flags everywhere. And if you're an official and you have a flag in your pocket, you're going to throw it on that play. My buddy Bo was a little bit anxious on that play. Bo Scaife. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 80. It'll be a five yard penalty, remain first down. You see Bo Scaife right here, just jump off the sides. Yeah, he had good intentions. He's trying to block somebody, but just a little bit ahead of the count. Scaife, one of the uh, two solid tight ends for the Longhorns. Scaife, a sixth-year senior out of Denver, was out a couple of years with a knee injury. And he and David Toms, quite a pair of bookends for the Longhorns. Lock to throw again, overthrows the intended receiver. And that is Scaife. I'll, I'll, I'll say that this probably plays into Vince Young's hands right here because everybody was talking about seeing Chance Mock come in and throw the ball and he really has not been on right now. He's he's uh, 0 and 0 for 3 right now and uh, he's really has some bad miscompletes. Came in when Young was injured on an interception that he threw and the Longhorn defense picked it off. And went 64 yards. Aaron Ross did, and it set up a touchdown. Mott came in on that drive, but just handed it to Benson twice. Absolutely. 0 for 3 since that time. On the roll, and this time he has Will Matthews out of the backfield and can't get it to him. Yeah, Xavier Jackson right in his face. You get a look right here. Vince clearly hit after the play after he released the ball. He did throw the interception, but he paid for it as well. That was in the first half, Vince Young, and that's the, the play on which he was injured. But he's throwing the football, warming up on the sideline, though. And only three of 11 today, and he was eight for 23 last week. Right. I mean, he's done so many other things. I mean, he's run the ball well. You watch him. Look at him, five for 53 on the ground. Then he had the 48-yard completion, so he's done other things. He had the tremendous touchdown down the sideline so he's done things to help Texas move the football third and 15 remember turnovers have been a key mock under pressure gets it off to Benson got room bounces outside across the 30 he's got a long horn first Much down and a big play for Texas I know Matt Eberfuss is going to be flustered because anytime you're in a third and long situation the first thing you're thinking about defensively is a screen you look at Chance Mock right here, fakes it to the left, he's under pressure, and he just drops it into Cedric Benson, and you got a couple blockers in front of him in the sideline, there's nobody on the sideline. But Brian Smith, the defensive end, was close to getting to that football, too. Yeah, luckily for Marcus King, he was able to hit him at the end of that play and knock him out of bounds. 20-yard gain. Benson's done on the ground, 71 yards. First catch of the afternoon just a moment ago straight ahead goes the senior from Midland Texas right into CJ Mosley defensive tackle a little more patient he needs to be just a little bit more patient I could tell soon as said we got the ball that he was already looking on the back side of the line of scrimmage maybe should have just carried it out a little bit more in the front side and would have opened up for him back there you got a chance to spend some time with him yesterday I did yeah to know him a little bit yeah he's a tremendous guy like you said he's he's got an opportunity to be um, the sixth player in NCAA history to have four straight thousand yard years Second and five, Matthews and Benson out of the yard. Mock gives it to Benson, skips one to the 40. Going to be well short. Got to get it up to the 45. So, yeah, it's interesting with Benson. He looks up to Ricky Williams, a guy who's definitely misunderstood by a lot of people. <laughs> oh, you think so? Yeah. But I mean, he said the same thing. He said, you know, just because I'm quiet, I'm a quiet guy and I don't like to talk a lot or sometimes I just say exactly what I feel. People think I'm aloof or people think I'm stuck up or I'm arrogant and I'm none of those things. He said I just don't have much to say in certain situations and then when I do I just I just choose to say honestly what comes to mind. Second leading rusher in the country 77 yards on the afternoon. Mock out of the gun throws it up top. Not even close this time. 
Good coverage on the far sideline. Line is sweet. But A.J. Kincaid step for step. Yeah, you see Chance, man, just and continue to be frustrated after each pass. He's, he's trying to get one off. You can tell he's trying to get into any type of rhythm, but uh, every pass he's thrown is just falling to the ground. And quarterback receiver talking about things as they go to the sidelines. Thompson and Boga back at his own 19. Richmond McGee, the junior from Garland, Texas, set to punt. Boga, back for Missouri. It has gotten awfully quiet at Royal Memorial Stadium. And Boga wants everyone to get away, and that's what they do. So it's down near the 24. Look at Missouri bounce. One of 35 yards from McGee. The Tigers with a chance. Brad Smith will lead them up to Daryl K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium here in Austin. They have the 1969 team on the field honoring them before the game today. They won the national championship. A win over Notre Dame that year. Brad Smith back on after the injury. On the roll, throws out, complete, looking right into the sun. It was Brad Ekwer Ekwu, the sophomore out of Arlington, Texas. Big day in Lincoln. More on that. We check in with different than last week for Nebraska. 70 yeah. to 10. I was on, I mean, come on, Nebraska, 70 to 10 to Texas Tech. To the 36 goes Marcus Woods, the redshirt freshman. Well, you think about that uh, Big 12 North division, as we said, Missouri at 2-0 on top, but uh, Nebraska, Kansas. Colorado, Iowa State, Kansas State. Kansas State playing so well today, but then. Uh, yeah. And then, which is, I, I think it's interesting because Oklahoma had the huge game here against Texas, uh, excuse me, Dallas against Texas last week, and then they go into Kansas State, and they didn't really look good for the first three quarters of that football game. Missouri with one more game against the South, and then the rest against the North. Plenty of time on the rollout, and there. It's coffee high into the air with a catch at the 42. So dangerous, Brad Smith. You saw Aaron Harris coming on the delayed blitz, had a shot at him, and, uh, you know, he just missed him. You know, Brad Smith just makes a miss, kind of sticks him out and jukes him a little bit. You see Aaron Harris coming in on the delayed blitz right there, and he has a clean shot at him, and then Brad Smith just kind of wipes him off. Coffee, his first catch of the afternoon was a touchdown catch. That's his second. And it's first and 10, Mizzou. Trying to run this way. Marcus Woods, nowhere to go. Guess who? Derek Johnson was in there first. Eric Hall in to help. So 643 and counting in the third here in Austin, Texas. The Longhorns with the lead as number 24 takes on number 11, Terry Gannon, Jamal Anderson, Mark Morgan down on the field. And it's been a game in which the defenses have really dominated. Not so much in stopping the offenses, but at key moments coming up with, turn with the turnovers. The turnovers have been a huge factor. And you get a sense of the way this game is going. And whoever gets the most turnovers have a great opportunity to win this football game. Second down here. Smith going to keep it. Got a big hole. Sliding into the 32. Just shy of a first down. If you notice a little bit of weakness in that hole uh, a couple series ago, Texas standout defensive tackle Larry Dibbles went to the locker room, so they got the backups in there right now. Uh, Frank Oakham, 65, in there on that play. But uh, you know, there's a there's a void in there right now because he was all over the football field making plays left and right for them. And he's out. He's in the locker room right now. Some heavy breathing going on with a defensive front as well. Frank Ocam in there right now. Third and two. Big third down for Smith. Woods flag on the play as he fights probably for a first down, but let's sort out the flag. Randy Crystal and the Big 12 crew here. Holding. Offense number 77. So it backs up Missouri, and that's a key penalty. Don't forget next Saturday, more of ABC's college football coming your way. Oklahoma State taking on Texas A&M tonight and taking on these Missouri Tigers next week. Another battle of top 25 teams. 
2.30 Central. That comes your way right here on ABC Sports. Oklahoma State 2-0 in conference play going into today's action. Oklahoma State got a big game tonight against uh, Texas A&M. A &M, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in that game. A&M &M also unbeaten in Big 12 play. Except they were beaten by the Utes. <laughs> Had to bring that up, didn't you? Make sure you point that one out. Your former Ute. Big the herd at 10. See Brad Smith checking off, letting the guys know that there might be a blitz coming. Throws it out. Right at the 38. The swarmed under is Martin Rucker, the tight end. And Texas with the stop on third down. I know Martin Rucker is a fantastic talent. His brother, the great defensive end for Carolina Panthers, Mike Rucker. Right. But third and 10, you cannot throw a five yard out. I don't understand that play. Especially with a tight end, you, you get it to a back. Yeah, for I mean, half well, you know, they say he, he runs tackle. a sub four, sub four five, or sub four six. Excuse me, he's got a lot of talent. I know you have to hit for with the, with the open man, but you run a play, give him a chance to roll out and run guys 10, 12 yards down the football field. Snap a little bit wide. Heinous trying to pin them in, and this one's going to hit at the three and go into the end zone. 37 yard punt, but they'll bring it back out to the 20 for we'll see. Chance mock. Vince Young don't know. Vince Young looks like he's ready. 21 14, Texas with the lead at home here in the third. On an absolutely gorgeous day in Austin, Texas. Temperatures maybe in the mid 80s, but a little breeze, which makes it you know, maybe not comfortable, but uh, certainly bearable down on the field. It is Chance Mock who is back in. Now in the shotgun for Texas as they take over first and 10 at the 20. Only 32 total yards for the Longhorns in the second half. Trying to change that here. Tony Jeffrey. Gain of maybe three. That's his first catch. Down to Mark Morgan. Them again. It's a split allegiance thing. So some fans will be both happy and sad at the end of this game. Yeah. Two step brothers you played as you said together at Nimitz High School. And uh, guys who are very close. But no real, uh, no, not, I won't say friction, but right. I mean, they talked about there not being a rivalry whatsoever uh, coming into this game. But there are the numbers on the two. Hey, you'd love to be on the phone with those guys the night before this football yeah, game. Yeah, right. Huh? Know, the, week, the weeks leading up to this game. Saw King almost stop a ball from going into the end zone on that punt, but uh, he could have made a play on it actually just a few moments ago. Third and five. Mock on the roll. Jeffries, nope. And Mock has not been on target. No, he was a little bit too strong. And, and you know, the play before that might have been a broken play. It looked like Mock was trying to get it to Cedric Benson. And then, you know, Chance Mock is not the guy that you want running the football, particularly in the middle of the defensive line. Two for eight. And we'll see. The next series, next time. Mac Brown's club gets the ball whether we see Chance Mock or Vince Young. Well you know you, you always want your teammates to have success particularly when a guy goes out like Vince Young but you know everybody was talking about well maybe we should bring Chance Mock and maybe we'll have a better chance of throwing the football. Well Chance Mock is two of eight so far. Yeah. McGee under pressure that one almost blocked and a good one. Thompson and Boga with a fair catch at the 28 a punt of 48 yards and no return. More action tonight. Not Big test for them. Change of quarterbacks in Florida State. The offense moving the ball better than they did. Virginia, the first team in the ACC to beat Florida State. Remember that? Yep. Brad Smith under center again. First down at the 29. Smith going up top. Got Victor Cisse, and he was open. Victor it was can, yeah. Derek Johnson trying to cover him, which he can't speed wise, yeah. but he was behind but a step. Yeah, Victor had a couple steps on him. He had a great, ran a great route. Uh, get, a, get outside of Derek Johnson, and uh, Brad Smith just threw it a little bit over him. Oklahoma scared today on the road at Kansas State. Nebraska with a big win over Baylor. And Colorado over Iowa State. Don't forget that matchup AM and Oklahoma State, and Missouri taking on Oklahoma State next week. Second down. Smith wants to keep it. 
Hesitation, run out of bounds at the 30 by Cedric Griffin. You know, initially when he when he dropped back and he, and he faked the handoff, I thought he was going to probably continue to go back and throw the football, and then it looked like he just was trying to find somewhere to run. Came to a dead stop at one moment. You look at it right here, he's going to drop back and under a little bit of pressure again from Brian Robinson. Third and nine from the 30. Just breaks out and, and smart. Get out of bounds, don't take any more hits like he did earlier. Third down, Missouri 5 of 14 on third down this afternoon. Out of the gun. Smith flushed out of the pocket. Can't find anybody. Going to throw this one away. Great coverage downfield by the Longhorns. Again, who's all over his back? Brian Robinson. Slow to get up is Smith again. Robinson's had a big game. Started with that interception on the two yard line that he took in. Smith here drops back, and once he starts rolling out of the pocket, if he doesn't see anybody down the football field, you just got to throw the ball. You're out of the pocket. You can't take 500 guys, 500 pounds of, of defensive linemen diving on top of you and trying to sack you. Uh, you know, when you're out of the pocket, just throw the ball away. Waiting to the last minute to uh, see if he could find someone open. There's Aaron Ross back at his own 30. Longhorns went after it. Didn't get there. Loss. No room. Stopped at the 29. Let's go back to New York. In Oklahoma. Well, we talked about it. Last week, Jason White, right. 113 yards. Right. So this week, flavor of the week. They don't talk about him for the Heisman. They yeah. throw out, you yeah. know, four of the names. You gotta start talking about him again. Yeah, definitely. You know, I don't know. It's, it's interesting you know, how you cannot talk about Jason White, but today, for a major part of that game, it looked like Kansas State just had Oklahoma's number. Chance Mock back in, gives it off to Benson. A big hole, gain of nine, close to a first down, almost a gain of ten. For Benson on first down, you know Williams on the hit. Don't forget, coming up later, if time permits, the thrifty Carmelo postgame report with John Craig and Aaron and highlights and analysis from all the action around the country. 149 and counting. Yeah, Terry, as soon as you start third. talking about Heisman, Cedric Benson reels off a nine-yard run. 86 yards on the day. Give it to the up back with Matthews, and that's a long one first down. So Mock, who has struggled in the air, two of eight. Maybe Mac Brown's idea is to keep it on the ground as much as they can from this point forward. Yeah, and you, you, you can never be mad at that. I mean, you know, Cedric Benson is the is arguably the best tailback in the country. You know, you got you have a good offensive line. You you have a team that, like you said, Greg Davis talked about it in the offseason. We knew they, they knew that they were going to have to be more of a ground attack. They knew because of the receivers they lost, particularly Roy Williams, the standout for the Lions. Now that the the emphasis of this offense was going to be on running the football. Texas out of the eye. Benson. Tough run. It's over. It's Not over. much going on. A gain of maybe one. Atia Ellison. The 6'4, 300 pound senior from St. Louis. There to stop him. Ellison and CJ Mosley. Uh, tough to run against. Yeah, two solid know. tackles. Yeah, two big guys who are very, very active. Uh, CJ Mosley, four sacks on the season. Uh, nine tackles for loss. You know, those two guys make a lot of plays. And Atia Ellison, we've called his name a number of times today. One sack, two guys, two, both 300 pounders. And this is, you know, defensively, Missouri has never had guys like that historically. So now you look at the statistics for them in the Big 12, and you, you look at the reasons why. It's because they got strong defensive linemen. They got linebackers that fly around and, and cornerbacks that like to make plays. Quick out to Swede, who gets across the 45, maybe to the 46. Marcus King stood him up along with Jason Simpson. Simpson from the Woodlands, Texas. Mention the fact that there are 23 players on the Missouri roster from Texas and it's by design. I mean, yeah, Gary Pinkle wants to recruit Missouri first and own his own state. But then after that, come to the Lone Star State because right. there are players all over the place. Yeah, you know, you talk to Gary Pinkle. He doesn't want to put too much emphasis on this game. Like if we lose, our season is going to be ruined. But he did. He did say it's really, really critical for us to come in here and have a good showing in Texas. And, and they already have one of the best players in high school football right now committed to Missouri. Third and four. Long count for Mott. Movement along the right side, and they're going to back up the Longhorns. 
Him and Justin Blaylock. Who stood up prematurely. I love what happens after offsides. Everybody's pointing at the other guy. And it's nobody's fault. <laughs> Prior to the ball being snapped, we have a delay of game. There was no false start. The delay occurred first. It's going to be a five yard penalty, and we're not going to wind the clock. All right. So it doesn't matter who moved first or right. <laughs> whether there was contact or had the delay of game. Well, Texas is going to have to go back to throwing the football, you know, particularly now in the third third down situation that they're in. They got to get chance marking some type of rhythm. You know, every time they've tried to throw down the football field, it's been incomplete. Now they got a third and long. And I tell you, there's a, there's a guy on that defensive side of the football for Missouri. They got to look out for Brian Smith is in, and, and this is the situations that he lives for: third and longs, passing downs. Smith, number 39, had three sacks last week. Tried to come on the corner, couldn't get there. This one complete. Lyman Sweet across the 50, and he may have a Texas first down. Quick, strong throw from Chance Mock. Maybe the most impressive throw so far. Yeah, you get to look at Lyman Sweet right here. Just going to make a simple break inside. I mean, you know, you talk about giving the quarterback rhythm. Run simple plays. Run, run the five-yard outs. Run slants. Run curls. Things that are easy, easy to complete. And the crowd. Starts to come alive. They'll move the chains. Third catch for Lima Swede, just a redshirt freshman out of Washington, Texas. He's got Roy Williams' number. Trying to live up to that. Final play of the quarter if they get it off. And they do. Benson bouncing outside. Cuts back, knifing his way to the 43. Gain of seven. CJ Mosley wraps him up there. 15 minutes left. Texas up 21 14 here in Austin. Matchup between two top 25 clubs. And Missouri, as we said, on top in the North in the Big 12. Texas coming off that loss to Oklahoma. Scoreless third quarter. Remember, we told you Missouri had dominated in the third quarter throughout the year 35 to 3, but uh, did not score in the third. Chance Mott gives it off to Cedric Benson, and he's got another Texas first down. So, a big pass on third down for Chance Rock just a moment ago, but they're keeping it on the ground during this drive for the most part, Jamal. Well, yeah, you're in the fourth quarter. You have a seven-point lead. You got great field position, you know, second and four or five yards, and you have the second leading rusher in all of college football, a guy who's your four-year senior and, and has a chance to eclipse so many records and, and join an elite group of running backs. Uh, to, to be the sixth in college football history to have four straight thousand yard seasons. So, I mean, this is Cedric Benson's quarter right now. It's a no brainer. They operate out of the eye now. Jeffrey in motion. Give it off to Benson again, who breaks through and is stopped. That could have been a touchdown. Nino Williams just saved six points for Missouri. Oh, I know. And Cedric probably. You know, that's so tough when he's a, such a good running back. But once one guy gets you down, I know he probably wants that one back. Looked like he was going to set up to make a move and, and just kind of got caught up at the feet. You see him pound the ground right there like, oh, if I can get another opportunity at that. But Texas has had great running backs. Obviously, you know, Earl Campbell, Ricky Williams, and guy that played with me in Atlanta, Eric Metcalf. He wasn't bad. Yeah. Pretty good backfield there. Mock gives it off to Benson again. Why not? <sighs> Lost it, got it back. That's the one reason why not. Right. Because he has been prone to fumble. Yeah, and it's so tough because, you know, none of them necessarily obvious drops. You get a look right here. Cedric Benson, he makes a nice cut straight up the line. Of but he's carrying the ball really, really high. And Jason Simpson just does a great job. Everybody on, it up. Defensively, everybody from Missouri is conscious of trying to strip Cedric Benson because he has a tough time with it. So number 24 taking on number 11, Iowa, Ohio State. Those of you watching that game, we welcome you to Austin, Texas. Opening moments of the fourth quarter, Cedric Benton, the nation's second leading running back, finding his way inside the 15 to the 14. Texas was up 14 to nothing in this game, but a couple of quick turnovers brought Mizzou back. It was tied at 14. 
halftime score was 21 14 and uh, after a scoreless third Texas is driving Jamal. right and you know Cedric Benson just had the fumble but what do you do the next play you give the ball right back to your guy I mean he is the guy for this football team for Texas he's a, the best player here you see 23 rushes 123 yards averaging over five yards a carry you did 162 to get to a thousand for the fourth straight year to the end zone touchdown Texas And Benson carried the ball throughout the entire drive. You got to give credit on that drive to Jonathan Scott, Casey Stutter, Jason Glenn, Will Allen, and Justin Labcock. They did a great job. Uh, Blaylock, excuse me. They did a great job. That whole drive of uh, blocking for Cedric Benson, giving him lanes to run in, particularly inside the tackles. Chance Mock came on at quarterback late in the second quarter for an injured Vince Young. Young looks ready to go back in at this point on the sideline with a helmet on, but it's been mocked throughout the second half. He has not thrown the ball all that well, but you give it off to Cedric Benson, you get out of the way. And that's worked on this drive. So the extra point up and good by Mangum. And the Longhorns extend the lead. 28 14, 12 52 left in Austin. 14 now for the Longhorns here at home, just a week after losing to their arch rivals. Their loss to Oklahoma, fifth straight year, but uh, every year they've come back strong after the loss. In fact, over the last four years, as you look at the drive, 11 plays, 71 yards. They ha they are 23 and one in the regular season. Right. The rest of the way after losing to Oklahoma. That's not a stat. Mac Brown wants to continue though. Alex Woodley bringing it back out from Missouri, still on his feet. Finally brought down out at the 23. But Cedric Benson, by the way, is 26 yards away from a thousand on the Air Pacific Life game summary. Brian Robinson to pick early, right to the house, and then. The other one, all these leading to points. So uh, Aaron Ross bringing it back 64 yards, leading to the Cedric Benson touchdown in the first half. That was the story in the first half. The three turnovers by Texas, the two turnovers from Missouri. Right, it's about capitalizing on the turnovers. In that last drive, you saw 11 plays, 71 yards. Cedric Benson had 59 of those 71 yards. Smith gives it off to Woods over the right side, out near the 25 Marcus Woods the red shirt freshman from Farmington Hills Michigan who came into the game with 179 yards on the year the third leading rusher splitting time with Damian Nash in the backfield yeah Damian Nash had the nice touchdown run but we haven't seen a lot of him since No, I'm starting to wonder if there's something wrong with him he hasn't been in the game at all Woods with 35 yards on 12 carries in the game Quick out, complete. Brad Ekwer, Ekwer with the catch, and he's got a first down. Drilled up at the 36. Yeah, Fourth but, catch of the afternoon for Ekwer, Ekwer. You get a look right here. Brad Smith's going to fake the handoff, gives him an opportunity, gives him a couple more seconds to throw the ball, and he throws out to Brad Ekwer, Ekwer, who does it, makes a nice spin. And if, hey, if he was in the pros, he kind of probably would have got back up and got the extra yards. Philip Geiger missed the tackle. You don't see that happen very often. There's Damian Nash right there on the sideline. He's just not playing. Marcus Woods over the left side. Trips and falls at the 32. Tripped up at the uh, 37. But Missouri, a team today, offensively, Jamal, that's, that's moved the football throughout most of the game. Third quarter notwithstanding, Smith got shaken up. Had to come out for a series or at least a couple of plays. Went back in. And uh, now, obviously, here in the fourth, sense of urgency has got to set in. Yeah, definitely. But it looks like they've gone back to what they started off. They were able to move the ball early in Oklahoma, and they've been able to move the ball consistently throughout this whole game. And they've given Brad Smith an opportunity in time. And what a tremendous catch. One-handed catch. catch by Cisse, the tight end, wow. Victor Cisse. Second catch of the afternoon, but the most impressive one of the day. Brad Smith is a happy guy right now. You see Brad Smith right here, drops back and throws a bullet to Victor Cisse, who just grabs it with one arm. And never brought the other arm no. over. Wow. He's like, I love that tight end. <laughs> I love my tight ends. Got a couple of good ones on the Tiger offense, Cisse and Martin Rucker. In fact, both of these teams use their tight ends often. Third and one, big play for the offense. 
Wide open, there is Rucker, the other tight end. Across midfield and inside the 40 to the 39. Yeah, he had a couple of guys open on that play. Uh, you know, he was running down the football field. Victor Cisse came up from the left side and broke across the middle of the field. He was wide open, too. He had several options on that play. Did a good job just getting the completion and the first down, and Missouri's on the move now. Third catch of the afternoon for Rucker. He's got 48 yards in the air today. So Missouri driving on Texas. The Longhorns up by 14 here in the fourth quarter trying to come back after that loss last week to Oklahoma. Inside give to Nash. Reverse. They're going to try to throw it. Pick it up. Smith dropped it. And he's dropped back at the 47 by Eric Hall. A little too much trickery. Yeah, you know, you can get away with only so much against a, team, uh, a defense that's explosive and quick like Texas, and they tried to do a little bit too much with the razzle-dazzle. Brad Smith drops the ball, and Eric Hall's just right there to make the sack. Like Smith just took his eyes off and looked upfield for a moment. And Hall, the junior out of Clarksville, Tennessee, on the hit. 13-yard loss. So a 13-yard loss back at the 48-yard line. Second and 23 out of the gun. Smith with time initially. Over the middle of the field complete, just past the original line of scrimmage to Thompson and Boga. Yeah, they, they definitely have to keep somebody in Brad Smith's face. You can't give him that opportunity to roll out and be in a pocket and just take his time and pick your defense apart. Get a look at the wide receiver right here, breaking across. Thomas and Boga just sitting up in the middle of the field. Like I said, Brad Smith rolled out, and he had plenty of time to find anybody he wanted to down the field. Game of 15. So it brings up third and eight. This has been an offense that has gone on long drives throughout the season. Not necessarily a big play offense. Boga hit as soon as he caught the ball and turned around. Big hit from Michael Griffith. Textbook. You want to talk about how to take a big man down? Michael Griffin, a guy who's only six feet, 200 pounds. You see him coming in, closing in on Victor Cisse right there, and just sticks his helmet right in the shoulder pads and wraps him up. So it brings up fourth down, and for Gary Pinkle, doesn't look like he took long at all to make this decision. You got to go for it. You're down by two touchdowns, about nine minutes left in this game. Crowd is into it. Quick throw, complete. Jason Ray, he's got a first down inside the 20 to the 19. First catch of the afternoon for Jason Ray, the red shirt freshman from Porter, Oklahoma. Again, if you give Brad Smith time, it's fourth and five. He has nobody in his face. He's going to sit back and be able to pick you apart. Again, just staring at his receiver the whole time on the right side of the football field. And Jason Ray makes a great play, breaks a couple tackles. It's a 14 yard game. Oh, that's a huge conversion. Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator, over from the Chiefs, was with the Broncos. The Jets been in the game a long time. Larry Dibble's back in the game. Defensive tackle for, for Texas. For the ball on the Texas 20. Nash gets away from one and then knocked out of bounds. But Aaron Ross was first to get there. He slowed him up enough for his friends. Aaron Harris made sure he didn't get anywhere. Oh, yeah, Damian Nash gets the ball and, and breaks breaks it outside and only gets a two-yard gain when you get an opportunity to see that play from a different angle. He might have had a chance if he cuts back inside for a bigger gain. Well, it's second and eight. Marcus Woods in for Nash now. So Veeman, the lead back. There goes Woods. Closed quickly, but scampers down to about the 13, right behind Veeman, the senior and former walk-on. Hey, Terry, this is what Missouri has been able to do today. I mean, they, they, they don't have a score on their side to show for it, but they've been able to move the ball successfully against Texas. If you take away the turnovers, obviously a, a, a tremendous, a big factor in every football game, but Missouri has been able to move the football against Texas. With some key third down plays, though, defensively for Texas on stops throughout the game. And here's another one. Derek Johnson 
all everything outside linebacker but nicked up on the sideline for this third down play Woods big hole through across the 10 should have a first down you see Damian Nash come back in the game and run the ball and Marcus Woods running the football Woods again gets the call burst through near the goal line down to the one it was Marcus Woods getting a lot of work this afternoon. Yeah, and you plenty of time, lot. even though we, we say you got to have a sense of urgency at this point in the game. Missouri, obviously, if they put it seven on the board here, right. they've got plenty of time. Yeah, you give a lot of credit to Tony Klinker and Pom Tony Palmer and Adam Speaker on that play for opening up a nice hole, and Marcus Woods just sticks his head down and gets the, gets a tough yard. Smith tries to keep it, fighting his way there. He's not going to get there. Okay. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Trying to get down. He's got to get down low. Brad Smith gets stopped right there. And everybody, you know, you got a guy like Brad Smith. You figure you're going to roll him out or try to get him on in the corner. And they just run a sneak with him. But he's just got to get down lower. And the Texas defense needing a stop here on third and goal from the one. Out of the eye, Nash stopped behind the line of scrimmage and drilled, driven back. It was Michael Huff who got there first. Yeah, Michael Huff makes a tremendous play, fills the gap. That's what you want from a strong safety when your linebackers or somebody else is not there to make the play. You have to have a solid, strong safety come up, and he makes a great hit. You see him, Damian Nash coming on there, breaking to the right side, and Marcus Woods is right there to snack him back. Timeout, Missouri. They'll have fourth and goal from the one when we come back. Play of the game coming up here. Fourth and goal from just outside the one for Missouri. Michael Huff with the great stop a moment ago. Got shaken up. He's out. Remember Derek Johnson, the outside linebacker, also out with an injury right now for Texas. Out of the gun. Smith's going to roll. Looks to get there. Touchdown. So a much different approach for Missouri after the timeout. Yeah, when you got two of the best defensive players for Texas off the field, it definitely is a disadvantage for the Texas Longhorns defense. And, and you, you look at you put the ball in the hands of the best player, the playmaker on your football team, and that's Brad Smith. Let him get outside a little bit and go. So Tannarelli on for the extra point. And we got a game with 524 left. Smith dropped the snap. Tannarelli couldn't get it after that. It was Brad Smith the hold. It didn't look like it was a bad snap. No, it didn't at all. Brad he just, Smith dropped just drops the ball. Takes his eye off the ball, and Tannarelli tries to kick it in to no avail. So it'll take six plus the two-point conversion for Missouri. 525 left lead, but they just came up a long drive to Missouri. 16 plays, 77 yards, almost seven and a half minutes off the clock. Here's a little pooch kick on the kickoff. Fielded at the 29. And Rome dead. He must have right there. Fair catch. Fair catch. Terrell Brown called for it, but then ran with it. Yeah. I did not clearly see Terrell Brown I didn't either. indicate fair catch. Number five, signal for a fair catch. Even though he was not the player that caught the ball, he ah. automatically killed. First and ten, Texas. Good explanation from yeah. Randy Crystal. You, can, you cannot trick the kickoff team. That's right. Yeah, a little bit. Well, he started to. He was trying. I don't know if he was going to call for a fair catch or just kind of get his momentum from starting to run again. One quick wave, and it costs him. So Chance Mock back under center. 525 and the eight point lead. Out of the eye, give it to Benson, keep it on the ground, but right away, CJ Mosley wrapped him up. Hey, Terry, you talked a moment ago about Missouri's long drive. It was it was an exceptional drive, but you cannot have the critical errors where Brad Smith drops the ball and they they, they need every point they can get. You know, they and then they miss the field, they miss the point after touchdown, and then you have the two critical interceptions early in the game. But when you're on the road in Austin playing against the number nine team in the country, everything is magnified. Benson needing 26 yards 
to reach a thousand for the season become the sixth player in the history of Division one a college football to do that four straight years. 137 yards on the day straight ahead a gain of one maybe two that's it again Mosley making sure it doesn't get any further so very conservative Mac Brown is on offense on this drive that's what got him there the last drive right he may have to change right now well you know this Missouri diff uh, football team knows that they're going to have to run the ball to have any success. Chance Mock did have the, the third yard play. You see Cedric Vincent right here. Mosley, these guys are going after the ball. Oh, yeah. You know, they're going after the ball. Ten interceptions, four fumble recoveries, a couple fumbles today by Cedric Vincent. Every time he touches the football, they're going to be guys from Missouri trying to not just tackle him, hold him up and strip the football from him. Got three fumbles today. Got two of them back, though. Off to one up. So third and seven. See if they open it up a little bit. Mock busted play nowhere to go down at the 30 brings up fourth down. What a quick three and out for Texas. Yeah I don't know what was going on in that football player. Why would why would they even try to call a play like that. They're deep in their own territory in the 30 yard line on the third and six. Uh, you figured you'd give chance a chance you know give him an opportunity drop back maybe throw a slant or a hitch or something. He did a good job on the last time on third and long. Man bobbled the snap a little bit initially too. So Richmond McGee. Time to put it away to Thompson and Boga. If Thompson ever needed a big play on a punt return it was right now. Second leading return man coming into the game in the Big 12 hasn't had much of a chance today though. Texas calls the timeout they'll talk things over. With 310 fourth and nine for the Longhorns here as Mboga is back at his own 25. A little bit of pressure by the Missouri Tigers on this play. Pull out of it. McGee's been good throughout the season. End over end punt and Boga chance to return though. Sidesteps one, but met by a host of tacklers from Texas out to the 33. Punt of 43 yards, seven yard return. Tigers have a chance though when we. Missouri takes over at their own 34 yard line. Texas leading a defensive stand. Eight point lead for the Longhorns. Damian Nash in at tailback. Brad Smith out of the gun. First and 10, swinging out to Nash. Got some room. Across the 40, carrying tacklers. For a gain of nine, it'll be second and one. Don't forget tomorrow, join ABC a couple of weeks. Tom Lehman, Brent Guyberger tied at the moment. And the third round, they're done with their third rounds in Greensboro. So the action coming your way tomorrow on ABC. Damian Nash carrying for the first down. They move the sticks. Lehman and Guyberger both at 12 under but you've got four others at 11 under just a shot behind Chris Smith right there two shots behind good finish set up for Sunday on ABC Smith under pressure flushed out down he goes at the 38 Roderick right for that high ankle sprain and all got there and Aaron Ross flushed him out initially Get a shot here of Brad Smith rolling out. Gets a little bit of pressure there from Robinson and rolls out. And Brian, excuse me, Roderick Wright just stretches out and gets a, gets a hold of his leg and gets a sack. Second and long, Smith to throw. Out of bounds, incomplete. And Victor Cisse may have caught the ball, but he was standing out of bounds. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, on that last play, Roderick Wright doesn't get that sack. Brad Smith's got a couple players breaking open up the field, and he would have the sideline to himself. And watch his feet. They're going to call. They actually called it initially a complete pass, and they talked about it and threw the flag. And that's why, because his feet were out of bounds. And we'll get the explanation from Andy Crystal at some point. Illegal touching. Illegal touching. On the offense, the receiver went out of bounds on his own, came back in, first one to touch the ball. No penalty, just a loss of down, third down. There you go. Drifty car rental post can report coming your way if time permits. A minute 43 left in this one. Gary Pinkle's squad trying to move the football but struggling on this drive. 
third and 17 coming up. Three receivers set. Nash out of the backfield. Time for Smith overthrows Thompson and Bogan. Brings up fourth down. Yeah, and he had Thompson and Bogan right there in the hole on the hash is open, and he just, just threw it a little bit too strong. See Brad Smith right here, a little bit of time moving around the pocket and just throws it over Thompson and Boga. Wide open. Who did not look very, very happy at the end of that play. No, he was not. Wait, Akina, Greg Robinson, the co-defensive coordinators. They need a stand here, and it could come down to this play. On fourth down, Smith hit as he throws, incomplete. Texas takes over. Brad Smith's got to know on the fourth and long that there's going to be a blitz coming. He's so dangerous. He's so dangerous in the pocket, and he's been moving around and been able to make plays with his legs. But you see the blitz coming, and he's just standing in the pocket, and he just takes a, a really big hit right there. Killer Bruins, Satchel, sandwiched him. So the Longhorns take over, and the defense holds. They had the defensive stand at the goal line, eventually gave up on fourth and goal from just outside the one. The touchdown to Smith, but it was pretty impressive to that point. And now they not only stop, but back up the Missouri offense. Yeah, they did. It was a fourth and long play, and Brad Smith had been, in the previous plays, he had been doing a good job of pointing out where the guys were coming from on that particular play. He just went through his normal sets, and they got a clear lane at him. Mock gives it to Benson, trying to run out the clock. A hit for a couple, that's it. Now they're screaming on the sideline, hold on to the ball. <laughs> Which is pertinent because uh, there have been times when Cedric has not done that. The four and two. Lost to Troy, of course, the, the upset earlier this season. And now perhaps here in Austin, Benson looks to get outside. Drives it back inside, inside the 30 to the 28. Stay in bounds, that's what they're saying. And he did. Move the chains because uh, got the first down, so the clock is stopped momentarily. You can see every time Cedric Benson breaks outside, and right before he comes into a pile, he starts to put extra protection over the football. Like you said, you know, he's had the fumbles today, and, and he knows the guys on that Missouri team are going to be coming after him trying to strip the ball. 150 yards for Benson. Needs 12 more to go over 1,000 or get to 1,000 this season. Not going to get the chance as Mock goes to a knee. So the clock will run out and Texas with the defensive stand on the last drive. It came down to the last drive of the game for Missouri, Jamal. Yeah, it did. You know, I've been, I was very impressed, Terry, today with Missouri. They were able to move the football defensively. They came in with all the stats, number one in the Big 12. And really, outside of Cedric Benson starting to roll in the second half, they did a good job. They had the trick play where Vince Young had the great 50-yard catch. Yep. But other than those big plays, they did a really good job. They showed up. And I don't really see this football team losing a lot of games. It'll be interesting to see who starts at quarterback next week for Mac. Proud now, our Chevy players of the game, Brad Smith and Cedric Benson. 150 yards on the ground for Benson and Smith, 237 total yards. Did throw a couple of picks that were crucial in the first half, though. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And Benson certainly big, not only taking it to the end zone, but in a couple of drives where I think it settled down this Texas team. Yeah, they did. And, you know, and that was the thing. You know, they said Benson wasn't running the ball a lot early in this game in the fourth quarter, but then he got going as the second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter came. He started getting strong and running in between the tackles, and, and Oklahoma started to exert their will physically on this Missouri team. Still got a quarterback controversy here in Texas, though, and they, they weren't that impressive throwing the football. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Everybody was calling for Chance Mock to come in and throw, you know, be the quarterback and saying, move Vince Young, the wide receiver. Yeah, he had the great catch, but Chance Mock wasn't, he didn't come in, and he wasn't tremendously effective throwing the ball either. The eyes of Texas here in Austin. So 
the Longhorns move to five and one and two and one in the Big 12. Missouri falls to four and two, two and one in the Big 12. They go to Oklahoma State, play Oklahoma State next week, and then four straight in the Big 12 North. Nebraska, Kansas State, Kansas, and Iowa State. And Texas with Texas Tech, Colorado, Oklahoma State, Kansas, and Texas. AM left on their schedule. Longhorns still trying to stay in the hunt. So that's your final score. Texas 28 to 20 with the win hanging on at home over Missouri. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Don't forget Al Michaels, John Madden in the booth in St. Louis Monday night as the Bucks. Battle the Rams. Once again, 28 20, Texas, a winner at home. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television. Goodbye, everybody.